the National Labor Union leaders in Nigeria, the NLC, started what was to be a five-day industrial action in Kaduna on Monday against what they called the unpopular policies of the governor of the state, Nasir El Rufai. The national president of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, led the protest with an objective to reverse the governor's decision to sack thousands of workers from the state and local government civil services. On Tuesday... 70% of the students of Kaduna State University are indigenous of the state. They are also children of workers, children of pensioners, children of petty traders. Yet, they are now out of school because they cannot afford the school fees. What type of a system do we want to run? Is it not the same governor that benefited from public school? Tuesday, the Kaduna State Governor, Nasir El Rufai, declared the Nigerian Labor Congress president and other executives wanted for alleged economic sabotage and attacks on public infrastructure under the Miscellaneous Offenses Act. The governor, who made the announcement via his Twitter handle, said a handsome reward will be given to anyone with information on his whereabouts. The organs that once we're able to prosecute this first leg, we must then also consult the organ to go ahead. And on the basis of those very clear information, and for the fact also that the action has succeeded, the point have been made very clearly, and importantly, the facts of the matter have been put before the public, including the substance of it. And basically, we want to thank all our members in Kaduna, and uh, also all our affiliate unions who are actually giving effect to this important decision of the National Executive Council. We also decided that in going further to try to have this dialogue, that the action will be suspended and the suspension will take effect tonight. And therefore, we thought that this is a very important decision of the organ that we must also convey to you members of the press, but also the general public. We must also take, thank the citizens of Kaduna. We have seen comments that are very positive. Even those that were hired to come and protest today is already trading. They were not informed of the reason they were invited to come and protest. And some of them, when they realized that the action was to protest against trying to protect workers' rights, they outrightly stated clearly that that was not the purpose for which they are actually uh, invited. We want to thank all the citizens of Kaduna uh, because the workers were also trying to protect their interests. And those students and their parents, that the fee have been increased. Uh, fundamentally, they are also citizens of the state, and we want to thank them immensely. Uh, since we arrived here, I think we have received all the cooperation that is needed. So on that ground, comrades, I want to thank you immensely for coming to try to uh, disseminate this information. After the meeting, the minister announced a resolution to constitute a 10-member committee to resolve the disagreement over what he termed as a communication gap. Joining us now on the show is the President Nigeria Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba. Good to have you uh, on the show, Comrade Waba. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Ruben, for having me on this show. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well, Comrade, you were declared uh, wanted. You were even advised to uh, 
report yourself to the nearest police station. But before we get to uh, the main issues about uh, labor, on Friday, Nigeria lost uh, the chief of army staff uh, in a very tragic uh, plane crash, along with 10 uh, officers of the uh, Nigerian military. Uh, they were, their remains were entered uh, yesterday. Uh, what's your reaction to that? That's the third crash in 90 days involving military uh, personnel. Well, and these uh, are members of uh, your Ruben, community. It's a very sad uh, situation. All of us are in mourning mood. Let me express the heartfelt condolences of the Nigerian working people under the banner of the Nigerian Labor Congress because uh, these heroes are also workers. And uh, let me express our uh, heartfelt condolences, uh, particularly to their immediate family, uh, their spouses and their children, uh, to the armed forces in general, and uh, all of us, uh, because certainly this is when their services are needed most, uh, because we are today confronting uh, the issue of insecurity across the length and breadth of this country. Uh, so certainly it's actually uh, a very monumental loss that uh, everybody, every right-thinking Nigeria, actually condole uh, the family and also the armed forces. Well, many Nigerians have expressed the opinion that considering uh, the status of the uh, chief of army staff and the affected persons who were on official duty, uh, that the president of Nigeria should have uh, uh, attended the uh, funeral uh, ceremonies, and if not him, maybe the uh, vice uh, president. And many Nigerians are outraged uh, that the president did not show up uh, although he issued a statement uh, to pay his, uh, uh, to express his uh, condolences. Uh, what do you think? Because many Nigerians are just uh, surprised that the funeral was in Abuja and the president should yes. have attended. <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, Ruben, because of the uh, very important position occupied by the chief of Amistad, but not only him. I think every member of his team that have died uh, is also important because every soul matters. Uh, so I think what is important uh, is for us to try to immortalize these uh, warriors that have died in the front line. Uh, and I think also because you see the uh, funeral was actually divided into two uh, because of their feet. Uh, because I saw uh, the Minister of uh, Defense actually leading the federal government delegation in one of the funerals and then the secretary to the government of the federation uh, leading also uh, the funeral uh, of the Christian faithful. Uh, so basically, I think uh, president should be mourning. And uh, you know, there are people also that uh, in this type of uh, tragedy, uh, even to comfort yourself uh, is something that is difficult. Uh, so I don't think it's something spectacular, but I think uh, it's actually to express our grief. And uh, I think the president have done that uh, to express the grief also of the country. Uh, I know of uh, a fact that uh, there are people that were there, they were shedding tears uh, because of the uh, very uh, tragic way uh, they died. And uh, as you said, uh, we must find ways and means of actually averting such a, a calamity uh, because this is uh, too often because we have just had one uh, not long ago. So I think it's to find ways and means of averting, there should be proactive measures, uh, possibly uh, is the state of our aircrafts, the uh, aircrafts, uh, which I think uh, we need to advance uh, maintenance and uh, make sure that uh, they are in perfect uh, condition before also allowing them to fly so that we don't continue to lose uh, our best. Because to me, uh, they are among our best and uh, promising uh, officers that have just died. Well, Comrade Waba, uh, let me go back to uh, Kaduna, uh, where you were declared uh, wanted. Uh, well, you didn't report yourself to the uh, nearest police station. Instead, you still went ahead uh, to lead a protest. What exactly is the issue? Because uh, Governor Nasir Rufai, uh, when he attended the virtual meeting of the Nigerian Governors Forum, made it look like Labour is just uh, was just behaving irresponsibly and that he was being targeted. And he told his colleagues that uh, they were not providing the necessary support and that the issue was not just about Kaduna, it was about every governor in Nigeria. So uh, is it true that Labour deliberately uh, targeted uh, uh, Governor Nasir El Rufai to victimize him and embarrass him? 
Well, uh, Ruben, let me tell the world and uh, every Nigerian that this is false. And you know, uh, one thing our politicians are good at doing is shifting blame. Mm. Uh, the issues are very obvious, and you have had Kaduna State Government making pronouncement that they are engaging in right sizing. They claim that the fact allocation uh, between 84 and 96 percent mm -hmm. is being consumed by workers' salary, and therefore they need to shed weight. Uh, we wrote to him precisely on the 9th of April when we received the first set of disengagement letters, and we read the content of the letters, and we found out it did not conform with Section 20 of the labor law, where it is provided clearly in the law that before you contemplate laying off workers under the issue of disengagement, as he intend to do, first is that the union shall be informed. Secondly, even where the worker does not belong to a union, his representative will be informed. And there are procedures there to be followed for any worker to be led off, including negotiating his exit package. And the fact also that before you issue him uh, later, you must also pay his benefit, including a severance package that will be added to it. All of this was not done, and we wrote to him precisely on the 9th. We wrote a letter, and we quoted uh, some of the circulars that were in circulation, but importantly, we said uh, also that this is the provision of the law. I think that letter was not responded to until Friday after our meeting. Oh, no, yesterday, Saturday. The response came on Saturday, maybe as a matter of afterthought, uh, to now debunk one of the circulars, but they still uh, actually maintain that they are right sizing. So in this circumstance, let me put the record straight. No governor in Nigeria today have sacked water workers in thousands, as has been done in Kaduna, that we have not challenged. If he has such facts, let him put before the public. Because the issue of losing your job is like a matter of life and death. They have children. Some of them, uh, uh, Ruben, you may need to know that some of them have worked for 20 years, some for 10 years, some for 25 years. You are disengaged without a formal notice and without also something that you can lay back on. Because the law is very explicit, the law of redundancy. And redundancy means involuntary loss of job on a permanent basis by a worker. That's what the law said. And that's why in our body of labor laws, it is only in the issue of redundancy that is the, there is a clear provision so that the right of the worker can be protected. There is a clear provision. Section 20 deals squarely with the issue of redundancy, which means involuntary loss of job, permanent loss of job or employment by a worker. And let me also inform you, the contract of employment, as it is today in our body of laws for civil servants, is the attainment of 60 years of age or 35 years in service. So every worker has a mindset, except where there are disciplinary cases, which is exceptional. So every worker has a mindset of planning his retirement when he is either 60 or 35 years in service. So if you are abruptly uprooted from your work and without any provision, and side by side with that, increasing school fees in all institutions, in Kaduna, particularly Kaduna State University, by over 500%, you don't expect labor to fold its arm. And basically, this is one issue that is uh, very fundamental to the right of every worker. And don't forget, what are unions meant for? Workers form union first for the pro purpose of protecting their rights and interests. That's the basic fact where unions are formed. Other issues are auxiliary. But the major purpose where Section 40 of the Constitution provides that workers have a right, just as politicians have politi formed political parties to advance their political interests, workers have a right to form unions and belong to unions for the purpose of protecting their rights. And one of those rights is this employment right, which have been violated with impunity. So you don't expect us to fall our arms and even saying that we are being sponsored. I think that is uncharitable. And you know, uh, propaganda may not work in this case because the substance of the issue is very clear. Let me also make the point very clear. Particularly in this year's budget, I'm aware that Kaduna State Government proposed only to spend about 16% of the budget on personal costs. And I think about more than two thirds on the projects. There is a balance that needs to be struck. Because when you build schools, it's expected that you must have qualified teachers. When you build hospitals, 
You must not only have qualified health personnel, who, which we refer to as human resource for health, they must also be well catered for, for them to be able to provide those key services. So there must be a way to strike a balance. And in all of these arguments, the issue of internal general revenue has not been put on the table. He only referred to the issue of uh, the fact allocation, which we're analyzing. I will give you also uh, the synopsis of what it entails. But what about the internal general revenue, of which in this year proposal, uh, they are generating about 60 billion. And last year, 50.7 billion was generated. Uh, so basically, we must be able to strike a balance. And uh, workers are not just slaves. That is the difference between a worker and a slave. A worker, his condition of work is regulated by law. Globally, some of those laws has their foundation under the ILO core standards because all member countries of the International Labour Organization have ratified and domesticated conventions. As I speak to you, Nigeria have ratified close to 30 conventions of the International Labour Organization. Those conventions regulate the world of work globally in all countries of the world, in all economies of the world. And therefore, workers are no longer treated as slaves. And you know that the ILO, the International Labour Organization, is the first agency of the United Nations. And which, whatever instrument a country ratifies, that instrument is also registered with the United Nations, and the country has an obligation to, to actually respect those uh, conventions. This, this is where we are. And those are the facts of the matter. Outside rhetorics and also the propaganda going on, these are just the issue. So is it true that Kaduna State is disengaging workers in their thousand? The obvious answer is yes. Has the process confirmed with the provision of our labor laws? The obvious answer is no. Do you expect labor to fold its arms and allow those workers to be thrown out like slaves? The obvious answer is no, and that is why we have engaged the issue. Well, Comrade Waba, the, uh, pres uh, the uh, federal government uh, waded into the matter, and there was a meeting, um, and at the end of the day, a 10-man committee was set up. That 10-man committee is expected to submit its report on Tuesday. Several members from the uh, Kaduna State government uh, side Three representatives of uh, uh, labor uh, on the other side uh, to come out with uh, certain resolutions. How is that meeting going? And what is the guarantee uh, that uh, Governor Nasi Arufai, uh, who is convinced or who insists that the time has come to humiliate labor, what is the guarantee that whatever comes out of that 10 uh, man uh, meeting will be respected by the Cardinal State Government? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ruben. In Labor Palace, there are procedures to address grievances. Uh, you are aware that already we declared a trade dispute. Uh, not only declaring a trade dispute, we withdrew our services uh, in the first instance as a warning strike. And it was within the uh, pendency of that warning strike that the Federal Minister of Labor uh, also intervened. And uh, under the law, uh, such provisions are allowed uh, because it is only when dialogue fails that uh, the last resort, which is a strike action, either warning or total strike action, uh, was convoked. And therefore, when that provision uh, was also uh, made by the minister, we thought that, yes, uh, we are, and in all circumstances, uh, labor is ready for social dialogue. It is because there was no avenue for any social dialogue that we had to resort uh, to the issue of warning strike. And therefore, uh, labor, uh, as provided in our laws, uh, will always be ready uh, to dialogue with any government or any employer on issues that uh, borders on workers' rights or any issue, including dispute of rights or disputes of interest, uh, because you have two disputes, dispute of rights. So this issue is a dispute of rights. And let me also try to clarify, uh, to say that when workers withdraw their services, uh, it's an economic sabotage. That is not correct. Uh, the laws are very explicit. Uh, once you withdraw your service, uh, you are not expected to provide such services. And that's why also to draw attention, we didn't say uh, indefinite action. Before we commence the action, we say five days withdrawal of services. I think what has happened is that they thought we are just joking. And uh, under my leadership, we have never made pronouncement that an organ meets and decides and uh, suddenly we are not able to carry out uh, such an action, and uh, also that uh, there was no intervention. So basically, that meeting was conveyed uh, under 
uh, the uh, uh, authority of the Minister of Labor, and he has that authority under the law. And uh, both Kaduna State Government and us attended the meeting. And uh, if you look at what you are reading, is just, uh, I think, the preamble. Yes, the preamble stated some of the issues and the arguments we are put on the table. And uh, the major issue, if you look at it on the resolution, is one, uh, to respect the provision of Section 20 uh, of uh, the labor law about the issue of redundancy, which I've referred to earlier, uh, which is what we have all agreed, that uh, also the fact that there is a gap uh, in terms of how those communications uh, ought to have been made, uh, because the law said before you contemplate, you need to inform labor in writing that I want to do right sizing. This is the scope. This is the number of people to be affected. And therefore, I'm inviting you for a discussion to discuss their benefit and when it will be paid. Not that you sack worker and now put in a letter your benefit will be paid in due course. And the ones you sacked two years ago, they have not been paid. So basically, those are the issues that have been highlighted in, the, in that MOU. And also to put a clause there, that there should be no victimization. And any worker that have participated in those actions, that worker should not be victimized. So basically, those are the issues. And that in order to work out a plan to respect the provisions of our law, that this team need to work. Because that cannot be done in the Ministry of Labor. Uh, it needs the employer, which is Kaduna State Government, and uh, the workers, the organization representing the workers, uh, but the Kaduna State NLC uh, leading the process, and uh, we give them a guide. Uh, but basically, it will be the Kaduna State Unions that will sit down with government and do a plan of how to ensure that in anything we are going to do, let's have the facts. If you say you are exiting a worker because he's not qualified, let us see the criteria. And all those things should be put on the table on a transparent way that everybody will understand. And basically also the right of the worker should be protected as envisaged in the law. So we are committed to that. And uh, I think uh, that question uh, about whether Kaduna State Government will be committed to the process, I think it's a question that is supposed to be thrown to them. But as labor, uh, first and foremost, we are on the discussion table because uh, we believe in the rule of law. We believe also in the sanctity of uh, the labor law, but importantly, we believe also that the worker is not a slave. The worker has a right, and that right must be respected by all employers of labor, be it government, uh, be it private employers. Those rights must be uh, respected, and those, uh, some of those rights are fundamental global rights. So Nigeria should not be an exception. Uh, so basically, this is our expectation, and uh, we are ready uh, to actually follow the process. And uh, you also remember that uh, the decision of the National Executive Council uh, to actually proceed on that five-day uh, warning strike uh, has also a clive yet uh, to say that if the actions, uh, if, the, if the issues are not sorted out, then we can also scale it up. Uh, so basically, we have also scheduled a meeting of the National Executive Council uh, to hold on Tuesday uh, by uh, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, virtually. We are all president and general secretaries of our 49 affiliate union and uh, their treasurers and also chairman and secretaries of all the 36 state council and Abuja 37, and members of the elected uh, leadership, uh, about uh, NAC members, about 30 of us, all together will be uh, joining that meeting virtually to review what has happened, uh, to review uh, the intervention of the federal government, and also uh, to give further direction. So this is where we are, but is to tell you that any state we have visited, and there are so many, you can remember that we visited many states, uh, you remember we had the same engagement, but not even on this issue. Uh, because I, as I said, uh, most of the engagement we have had is not about throwing out workers in their thousand out of job. There is no state that have done that. And that's why this is a peculiar issue. And uh, the action was as a matter of last resort, because there was no avenue even to dialogue and even to understand ourselves, and even to get, give us uh, the crux of the issue, which is mandatory under the law. It's mandatory uh, for the employer to share such information with labor. Well, Comrade Waba, let, let's talk about <coughs> new national minimum wage, which was signed into law by President Buhari uh, two years ago. I recall that at the time, after the tripartite meeting, uh, Labour also uh, had meetings at the subnational level to agree on the template. And this year, uh, Labour was also saying those states that have not implemented the new national minimum wage law are. Uh, you know, breaking the law, and labor threatened to call out uh, workers on strike. Where are we with that? But 
More importantly, I would like you to address the fact that a few days ago, it was reported in the media that even the Nigerian Labour Congress is not paying its own workers uh, the new national minimum wage. So the question was asked, what moral right does the NLC have uh, to question state governors when even it's in its own organization is not obeying the law on minimum national wage? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me even start from the last one. Well, that was a propaganda published on a uh, media platform. Uh, that propaganda, I saw Kaduna State Government uh, actually doing a billboard with it and uh, also placing it in Kaduna State, uh, of which that was not the issue that took us. But let me put the issue into context. Uh, the uh, said report, I know that it was a planted story, uh, also sponsored by a governor. We are fully aware of that. Uh, NLC, as of today, uh, is paying higher than the minimum wage. Everybody knows that there is nobody in NLC that receives lower than 30000 That's not possible. And they know also that in the case of minimum wage, we have a standard. Uh, what we'll be doing is adjustment. We do salary review. And uh, they know also that when two-thirds of the states implement the minimum wage and affiliates pay, that's when we do. So that's the standard. The rule is known. Everybody is known. Uh, that rule is very known. Every of our members are aware of it, every worker. And that's why in that report, if you read it very carefully, there is no source. They say they interview a, a worker of NLC, which is false. So it's a planted story. Uh, it's a propaganda. Uh, we are not mindful of that. We are not unmindful of that. And that's why I'm, I'm responding. I I'm also aware our head of information and uh, also head of international have responded to that on different platforms. Uh, so you must get it very clear that NLC is not paying uh, below the minimum wage. That is false. Uh, we have a review, uh, salary review process, which the standard is two-thirds of the state's paying uh, means or employers paying because uh, the source is the check of this. Uh, so basically, this is the standard we have, and everybody is aware of that. Uh, so basically, that's just a mere propaganda. Uh, then on the issue of implementation of the minimum wage, yes, the minimum wage is already a law because it's the barest minimal below which no employer of labor should pay its employees, except those that are exempted expressly in the law. And that is why we have said that any employer, including state governments, are under obligation to respect the provision of those laws. And we even reminded ourselves how we arrive at the minimum wage of 30,000. Some state actually proposed 40,000 at the negotiation table. And you remember that all the states were represented by one governor each on the negotiation table, each from each of the geopolitical zones. So it was like a consensus between private employers, government employers, and organized labor as a body, where we agreed that, yes, one, the ability to pay was considered. The issue of inflation was considered. Purchasing power parity was considered. All factors that we are provided for in the minimum wage convention was actually uh, applied in arriving at the figure. But unfortunately, as we are aware, uh, as we speak, some states are not paying. And side by side with the decision we took alongside the case of Kaduna is to the effect that any state that has not started or is not paying, the state workers should also withdraw their services. And you remember it was in the context of that uh, decision, Taraba went on strike, Kwara went on strike, uh, Benway implemented. Those are the processes. And therefore, the process is ongoing. But that decision has already been taken uh, because we want to make sure that no worker, for any reason, will be denied the benefit of minimum wage. And also, let me try to categorize where we are. In the category, we have three categories of states. There are states that have implemented the minimum wage and consequential adjustments. Minimum wage means nobody should receive lower than 30000 Consequential adjustment means if you adjust 30,000 for the minimum worker, it means it will affect the salary table, of which you need to then balance it, all the salary table. If not, uh, those on seven will then be at power with possibly somebody on grade level three. So that is what is referred to as consequential adjustment. So there are states that have already uh, implemented both the 30,000 and consequential adjustment. And we have many that have implemented only the 30,000, but the consequential adjustment is still on the table. And we have those that have not done either of the two. They are trying to say they are on the negotiating table. So these are the three categories of 
uh, the employers that we have. And this cut across both private and public employees. So we are harmonizing all of this together with a timeline, but already we have taken a decision in any sector or any state where there is no sufficient commitment to respect the decision of the neck. We have said those states should actually withdraw their services. So this is the true reflection of the information outside the distorted information that uh, many people are using as propaganda uh, to then say, ah, oh, somebody is not paying. Then why are, you, why are you coming to ask me why am I sacking, sacking workers? There is difference between sacking of workers and then the issue of uh, 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 implementation of the minimum wage, of which we have taken decision on that also pari passu uh, about the issue of uh, the minimum wage. Well, comrade, a few days ago, the um, Nigerian Governors uh, Forum joined the NMPC and also the Ministry of Petroleum to say that uh, uh, the subsidy that is provided for uh, in the downstream sector is not sustainable and that Nigerians should be prepared to pay a minimum of 385 naira per, uh, per litre uh, as pump price of petrol. Now, before now, we were told that Labour was having uh, some discussions uh, with the uh, government with regard to, the, to what would be the appropriate price per litre of uh, petrol. But now the governors have said, well, this is the reality. This is what will happen. Although there has been a press statement from uh, the federal government side saying there will be no uh, increase in pump price in the month of June. But it looks like something that will happen sooner or later. So what's the... Uh, Status of the uh, discussions with government on this particular issue, and what are the expectations uh, thank you, of uh, labor? Uh, Ruben, the f yeah, the fact of the matter is that I am aware that you remembered bailout was given to the states, and you remember recently the central bank governor said that the deduction of the bailout given to states will start immediately. And you remembered the response of the governors. So I was told uh, from the information we have gotten that uh, the issue of uh, increasing the pump price uh, in the name of removing subsidy uh, was a fallback position uh, to ensure that uh, the deduction of uh, the bailout given to the states uh, is not given effect. Uh, so basically, I think that is unacceptable uh, because everything must be taken on its merits. Uh, no, 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 the, the issue of uh, loans collected, and you remember these loans, NLC wrote about the loans, uh, the bailouts, whereas they were given actually to address the issue of salaries. Uh, you remember there is a report uh, by ICPC to say most of those funds were also diverted. People helped themselves. Uh, so basically we are not in support uh, of the idea to say that instead of uh, uh, paying uh, the, 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 the bailouts, that uh, the fallback position should be to put the burden uh, on the larger Nigerian public. If that is the idea, I think it's an idea that uh, is not sellable and it's not something that uh, can be pushed down the throat of Nigerians. Uh, you know for sure that uh, the times we are living in is extremely very hard. Here we are on one hand, the minimum wage is not being paid. Okay, we'll take a quick uh, break there and then we'll come back to uh, Comrade Ayuba Waba. <laughs> Comrade, thank you very much for staying with us. Very quickly, I mean, you were talking about uh, the proposed removal of a petroleum subsidy. Uh, you were linking that to the repayment of the bailout funds by the states. Uh, if you could also, as you uh, conclude your thoughts on that, tell us what alternative the NLC is recommending to government mm. as to ensure that uh, Nigerians don't have to uh, rob a bank to be able to buy fuel. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I was just trying to uh, respond to that question uh, before uh, the uh, break. I was trying to say that, yes, uh, we have seen the decision of uh, the governor's forum, uh, which is also connected, as I was told, uh, to the issue of the bailout that was granted in the states. Uh, because just a few weeks ago, statement uh, that the deduction of the bailout will commence soon. And uh, we are told that uh, that was what necessitated uh, the decision of the governor's forum uh, to now say instead of deducting 
the bailout which you have given us, why not then increase uh, the pump price or under the pretext of uh, subsidy to over 380 per liter? Uh, you asked whether there was a uh, uh, an ongoing meeting with NLC. No. The last meeting we had, which is about two months ago, uh, the meeting ended sine die. Sine die means the meeting ended without any conclusion because the government presented their position. We also presented our position, and therefore the meeting was adjourned sine die. So there was, there's no consultation ongoing. But the point I want to emphasize is that looking at the situation we are in now in the country, and the fact also that uh, the challenge in the economy is biting that are on fixed wages. Uh, you have just discussed the issue of minimum wage, where in many states the salary is not regular, but also the larger Nigerian problem, uh, because uh, the report on the inflation rate uh, is something that is uh, in public domain. And importantly, is also the fact that many people have gone into poverty. Uh, so looking at the scenario and the uh, indices, microeconomic indices that are on ground, uh, I think we have to be very careful uh, not to also inflict more pains on Nigerians because uh, there are a lot of issues that needed to be sorted out. You remember when we had that conversation with government, we even disputed the fact that 90 million liters is being consumed every day in Nigeria uh, because we have seen the figure from many countries that are larger than Nigeria and what they consume is actually uh, much more lower than Nigeria. So all those issues are issues we have tried to interrogate, uh, but it's also to make the point that we should not transfer the inefficiency in our system uh, to the citizens. And that has been the point we have hammered on uh, long before now. So basically, uh, is to inform you that our position has remained very consistent, and to say that uh, after that meeting, which was, uh, I think, three months ago, there was no meeting that was held, and the meeting was adjourned in the time. Uh, but before I actually conclude on this, Particularly on the issue of capital, I think there is uh, the, the lady that spoke, she may not have understood the issue. The issue is workers can be disengaged, but their rights must be respected. Mm -hmm. And that is why the law of redundancy is there. You cannot disengage somebody that has worked for 20 years by merely giving a letter and, both, and then put his family in disarray, uh, his children out of school, and then you'll be a destitute. That is not allowed by law. And that is what we are defending. And I think we should separate that from the issue of payment of wages. It's a different issue. And that's why there's a different law regarding the issue of redundancy. I've said also that in the 2021 budget of Kaduna State, they have actually budgeted to use 16.5% of the budget to spend on personal costs. That is, they put the budget, both the fact, receipts, and also the internal general revenue, which is very important. Uh, because these are revenue accrued to the states. Mm. If you put the two together, what percentage is being used to pay workers pay? And don't forget that those workers also uh, provide very key services, which I try to enumerate. In education, you need teachers. In healthcare and all other sectors, you need those category of workers. And how many are the workers? From what I've saw from the budget, the workers are 31,000. Uh, so basically, those are the issues that we need to look at. We are not saying that. That's why the provision is there. If you say you want to share weights, you want to uh, do redundancy, then you must respect the law. And part of the law is that you must pay the worker that have worked for 20 years. You can't throw him out like a dog. I think that is the issue that is central in this argument and discussion, which we need to understand. Thank you. Well, comrade, uh, quickly asked you, what is the alternative uh, that NLC is proposing with regard to the first subsidy regime? And uh, Dr. Wanere, who responded uh, to some of the points you made earlier, I'd raise the point. She asked the question, what is NLC's plan for Nigerians long term? And she asked, what is NLC doing for her as a citizen? Uh, I was uh, tempted to interject to say that yes. NLC is interested in workers, not uh, you know, international scholars like her. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ruben. NLC is a membership organization. We don't just do, uh, 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 like she said, we workers did solidarity in Kaduna. No, all the workers are members of NLC. They pay affiliation to NLC. 
They are members of NLC. So if you look at our constitution, it's very explicit. Workers belong to trade unions first for the protection of their rights and interests at the world of work. But we also look at larger issues that affect uh, the general public. Just recently, we had the National Security Summit looking at the issue of security. Uh, we are part of the issue of the electoral reform. We are part of a lot of process. We are part of the constitutional review process where we are going to be in all the centers to prevent to be brought, brought back, not only protecting workers' interests, but interests also that borders on everybody. So basically, we also look at issues that pertain to citizens. But she must understand that member uh, NLC is a membership-based organization. It's a trade union organization. So basically, she must understand the uh, centrality of our role and also our responsibility and our clear objective. Uh, outside the fact that we can do many things uh, to protect Nigerian citizens, which we have been doing, uh, you remember that all through history, NLC have also responded to issues of development. Uh, but basically, we must also not uh, centrally and uh, frontally address the issue that is core to our mandate. Well, uh, Comrade uh, Ayuba Waba, let me ask you about open grazing. So, within governors of the uh, southern parts of Nigeria, they've banned open grazing in their territory. Now, the um, Attorney General of the Federation responded that. Look, open grazing is like uh, people selling spare parts in the northern part of the, uh, of the country. Well, we guess, you know, cattle herders are workers too. I don't know whether the uh, Mieti ally is a member of the NLC. Spare parts dealers are also workers too. Uh, so do you look at it from an economic perspective or from an ethnic perspective? What's your take? Because cattle rearers are also uh, workers. Those are spare parts dealers are also workers. Well, 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 thank you very much. Uh, I think maybe you also need to look at the definition of a worker. In a worker situation, there are workers that are in the, in the informal sector. There are workers also that are in the formal sector. Uh, in the informal sector, you have employer-employee relationship, which means somebody employs me either as a domestic servant or as an individual. He employs me and pays me wages. I then exchange my labor for the wage I would use to take care of my family. That is the type of relationship. But when you look at the broader issue of workers, yes, uh, we can say everybody is a worker because you also work to earn a living. Uh, even the person that sells spare part is a worker uh, because he sells spare part and uh, he earns a living. Uh, and also the person that also cattle and uh, farmers are also workers. Uh, so in the whole of this conversation, it's very clear that uh, I think we are trying to also miss the point. There is an issue that is in place. The issue is the issue of others' farmers' conflicts or the issue of insecurity occasioned by the fact that there are others that are also not of Nigerian even descent, but they, are, they come in at will, and then there is the issue of insecurity. So basically, I think the argument is about what model uh, do we try to now take on board to address this uh, particular challenge? And I think, uh, clearly speaking, uh, I will go with the fact that, yes, that there is now, it's now the time to try to reform some of those uh, sectors. And uh, I think basically uh, what has been said about the issue of reforming uh, the issue of uh, rearing uh, of uh, cattle and animals, I think is something that we can look at it. Uh, but I think also in addressing this issue, we must also uh, look at some peculiarities, uh, particularly the peculiarities that are peculiar to our environment, uh, to different uh, uh, segments of our society uh, in making uh, those decisions so that we don't also make decisions that at the end of the day will bring about a much more problem. Uh, so basically, I think that is why it is important, and I agree, that we need to discuss some of those issues, the process and the costs, and also what will be a better option that can be able to address the challenge that all of us are facing today. So I think the argument, uh, both sides, is something that we need to uh, sit on the table to look at it instead of just uh, discussing as individual. I think uh, this issue of having a forum uh, to have a discussion around this issue I think it's very important and fundamental. And I think also uh, the process, the ongoing process of the constitutional review, uh, which the two chambers of the National Assembly uh, is driving, I think some of those issues also can feature there. You remember also that NLC participated in all the constitutional conferences, including the 2014 conference. You remember we were there in good number. And some of the issues we are conversing are uh, some of the issues we are conversing there. And I'm sure that we can find some of those recommendations very clearly uh, in those uh, constitutional processes or even the conferences that are referred to. So basically, I think uh, we are just undoing ourselves uh, to be discussing those issues in silos 
uh, instead of discussing them in a very coordinated manner where we can be able to have recommendation and those recommendations can be implemented instead of just uh, playing to the gallery and then speaking to the media and then at the end of the day, issues are not addressed. Uh, so basically, the position of NLC is that let us have a platform to discuss some of those issues and let us see how to uh, take on board uh, the idea and uh, the perspective of each of the groups so that we can be able to have peace in the country. Well, thank you very much, Comrade Ayuba Waba, President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC. Thank you for joining us on This Alive, the Sunday talk show.